right. Well, cool that uh, so much people showed up today for this meetup at uh, Triodos. Happy to have you all. Um, I'm going to tell something about network mocking. Um, and uh, yeah, let's go. So uh, I'm Tima. I live in Utrecht. I'm a developer since 2010. Um, I'm a, a self-employed contractor, and I'm now at Triodos for two and a half years. Um, and I love rock climbing, coding, and also open source. And this is something I want to talk about today. So I think if I mention UI testing, everybody knows how that looks in Xcode and on Apple platforms. Basically, you have a, uh, an app, and that goes through a couple of steps um, that, you, that you make a list for, and the app goes through all your, uh, through your steps. And this is a great way to make sure that your apps works as expected. So this is a quick demo of Pocket Cast, an open source uh, iOS app. Um, and yeah, you can, uh, you can see how it works. So UI testing. Who, uh, who of you has written one, well, these tests? Yeah, a lot, right? Um, and is this a familiar image when you're writing UI tests? Yeah. Yeah, I know. They're, they're pretty hard to get right. So um, in, my, in my experience, there are two main issues why this is so hard. The first one is interacting with the UI. Um, the APIs by Apple look great, but a lot of times they're pretty buggy. Um, yeah, so it's just hard to get those tests uh, stable. And another thing is test data, um, especially if your app uh, makes a lot of network requests and relies on the network heavily. Um, there's a dependency on your on your test data for your test, obviously, and if that data changes, then yeah, your your test stops wor stop working or get flaky. Um, so these network requests they can fail uh, when, for example, there's no internet connection. So you want to run your test, but you're on the beach, yeah, that doesn't work. Or maybe you're on the train getting to a meetup. Um, they can also fail when the backend that you're using for UI tests uh, has a different API spec and it's just returning different data than your app expects. Or when the backend just returns different data that you expect because maybe you want to log in a user that's not registered on the backend. Or maybe you want to register a user, but the user account is already existing in the backend. So how can we solve this? We could stop the network, but how? So um, in most of the apps, you write some code that's basically your network layer. Uh, and that layer uses foundation, the NSURL session APIs, to connect to a server. So I think there are mainly three options where we could take a look at how we could do this stubbing. Oh, one back. So the first one is that we could stub NSURL session inside of our own code. So I think the second one would be to swizzle foundation, swizzle NSURL session, uh, and stub it that way. And the third one is to stub the server. But before we do it, we have to remember how these UI tests are actually set up. So Xcode will create a test runner for your app. And then basically, the test runner will launch your app and will execute the UI test. But the test runner can only access all the externals of your app. The test runner can't just say, like, app.api session and step away the session. But what we can do in the test runner is tell the app with a launch argument that it's running a UI test. And then in our app, we can check the process info to see if we are UI testing. So how can we use this? If we go for the first approach, stubbing the app's API la layer, then, for example, in some network code where we would access a URL session, we could say, OK, if the process info arguments contain UI testing, then we're going to use our stub session. Ah, I had arrows there. Um, but yeah, this has some downsides, because you have to add a lot of testing code and stubs to your app sources. And yeah, that's not ideal. 
Um, it's also not very flexible because you want to execute a lot of UI tests, but yeah, then you have to preset all those stubs in the in the code. Yeah, it's not ideal. And also, your stub session is not the same as URL session, so it will behave differently as error prone. So we could also swizzle foundation. We could check in the app delegate or somewhere else where you set up your network if you're UI testing, and then if so, we could swizzle it. There are a few libraries for this. I found four, but there's a lot more. Um, so this is an example of one of them. We could say, hey, if the host is list.pocketcast.com and the path is triangle.json, then we're going to return this JSON instead of making a real network call. This has the upside that we can leave our API code untouched, except for this in your app delegate or somewhere else. But you still have to add all those steps to your app sources. And it's not so flexible, because you still have the problem of predefining all your tests here. So I think there's one other interesting, interesting option, and that is to stop, step away the server. So we set up a step server, and we set up all the steps that we want the server to use. And then we point our app to that server instead of the real server. Um, and the cool thing is that it almost needs no changes to our source code. I think it's pretty easy to set up as well. And it's really flexible, because in our test runner, we can create the server, and we can reuse it for every different test. But yeah, then what stub server should we use? Um, I did a Google search last week, and there are quite some stub servers. And I really had to laugh at all the, all the puns on the word mock, like this smoking or mockadio. Um, so, but the one uh, we're using at Triodos is called Mountain Bank, and I want to tell you something about it. So, Mountain Bank is a project by Brandon Byers, uh, and it's basically a platform for mocking network requests. You can use it to configure your servers. It's standalone. It's lightweight. Um, oh, this clicker. It's open source and it's free. Um, and it runs on Node.js. So the installation is quite, uh, quite easy. You just say npm install global mountain bank, and then you can start it with mb start. So how does it work in your test setup? If you have your mountain bank instance running, then from your test, there's a REST API you can use to set up a server. So you call the REST API with your steps for that specific test. And then Mountain Bank will create a server for you. And Mountain Bank calls these things imposters. So we have our step server running. And then when that is created by Mountain Bank, Mountain Bank will generate a random port where the server is running on. And then the test can launch and configure the app with that port that the stub server is running on. So for example, port 4010. So then when the app sends any request, it will send them to localhost uh, 4010, and then the test server will respond with the steps. So then in the, in the imposter, there's a selection that takes place to determine which response needs to be sent back to the client. So when the app makes a request, for example, podcast.json with, with some header, then the imposter will check which, which stubs uh, it contains. So here we have an imposter with two stubs and a default response that will just always trigger, always returns if nothing else matches. Uh, and let's see how this, how this works. So these predicates, they have request fields and they basically match against incoming requests. And the response can be anything, like JSON, image, some binary response. So first, the imposter will check the first stop. Um, so the first stop has one predicate. And the predicate basically checks, hey, I've got a method. Uh, it should be get and a path discovered to JSON. So in this case, the path is different from what the app is requesting. So the imposter will then take a look at the second step. And this one has two predicates. The first one uh, is a predicate to check the method and the path. And the second one is a predicate to check the header. So in this case, they both match. 
uh, and the stub will select the first response to return to the app. So then um, the app can make another request. So, oh, sorry, no. So then the app, um, so the imposter will return the first response. So in this case, a 200 with the response, uh, a list of podcasts. So then the app makes another request. But then the second time, the same predicate match, and then the uh, stub will return the second response. And then when the app makes another request, it will return the third response. And those responses can be different. So the thir third time, it can return a 500 status code, for example. Um, so this project works great. Uh, and there's a nice REST API. But the downside of that REST API is that it's JSON, it's not type safe, and it's a lot of work to set up all your steps. So that's why we created Mountain Bank Swift. So a year ago, Matthias and I, where's Matthias? There. Um, we started working on this project. Um, Trilos was already using Mountain Bank, but the implementation uh, was rather small, and it was not including all the features that Mountain Bank had to offer. So then on one of the POC days uh, of Trilos, we decided to see if we could open source uh, this project and just write it from scratch. So now we're working on, working on it for about 10 months, and we created a full API that sit, sits nicely between your tests uh, and the Mountain Bank instance. So let's see uh, how this works and how you can integrate it into your project. So the integration is quite simple. In Xcode, you just say file and you add it as a, as a package. Um, and then you add it to your UI test target. And then in your test, you do the following. You create a mountain bank, uh, you create a mountain bank client, and then in your test, you create an imposter with a list of stops, and you post imposters to mountain bank. And then in your, uh, in your app, uh, when you launch the app, you basically say that you're UI testing, and you pass along the server that it's running on, and you say, uh, launch. So I created a small demo app uh, to demo it today. Uh, it's a really simple app. It uses those uh, APIs from uh, Pocketcast, the app we saw earlier. Um, and it has a list and has a detailed page. It uses two endpoints. Uh, and we're going to see if we can add a error handling UI test. OK, so um, I already showed the host file uh, where the hosts are listed in the app. Um, but let's first import uh, Mountain Bank to the project. So normally you would type in here the URL, but it's already listed here as the recent one. So let's add the package. And then I'm going to add it to the UI tests. Hopefully the Wi-Fi will help me. Yeah, all right. Uh, OK, and now in the tests, I can import Mountain Bank. There we go. And I can create a client. Oh. And we can choose the port number, but it's by default just running on 2525, so that's fine. Uh, ah, yeah, let's, let's start it because we need to use it. So I say MB start, and I'm going to say allow uh, injection because we need that later on. Um, so now we can create a list of imposters. So let's say imposter. Um, so you can choose a port, but we're just going to let Mountain Bank decide a port. Um, and we're going to use this one for the, for the list, oh, not, the, not the codable one. So let's just say lists. And then we're going to create a list of stops. So the first one we're going to create is just a uh, stop. Nope. With a response. And this is going to be an is response with the status code of 200. Oh, well, let's say 500. Yep. Uh, and then this needs a predicate as well. And this is an equals predicate. Oh, come on. Uh, yeah, should be good. Ah, thanks. Always good to have a live audience helping. All right, equals um, request. Oh. 
So we want something with a method get, and we want the path that starts with trending, trending.json. We don't need the options. Yeah, this will run fine. OK, so now we post this to Mountain Bank. Try await Mountain Bank post imposter. Um, and then we want to know on which port it is running. So let's get that port out of there. Um, and then, yeah, here we can just return or fail, maybe. All right, so now we got the port. So now on the application, we can launch the application, but let's before, before we're going to launch it, let's add a launch argument. Uh, UI testing. And in the environment, we're just going to say uh, lists API host, local host, oh, HTTP, and then the port. All right. Column. 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 Thank you. Nice. I want this in my day job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, uh, let's run this. But before we before we run it uh, in the host file, um, I'm gonna check if we are UI testing. So if UI testing is UI testing, this is a boolean. Oh, all the other things. So we're gonna check the process info arguments contains. UI testing. Um, yeah, and then if it's UI testing, we want to extract that uh, host. So we say list API host uh, URL. Oh. We also get it from the process info from the environment, and then as the key list, did I call it lists? I think so. Lists API host. Uh, yeah, and if that's set, then we're going to map it to url.init. Um, all right, we're going to flat map it to url.init. And then this is going to be uh, optional. All right, and then uh, when we're returning the list for uh, that's been, been used everywhere in our app, the, the host, we're going to say um, list API host. I'll actually, let's call this UI testing list API host. Um, and if it's not set, then we're just going to return the production one. Um, ah, yeah, let's make these static as well, because we don't need to make it a, a regular one. OK. So I think all should be good now. And we can run this and see. Um, oh, I've got all these clones here. Which one do we need? Yeah, this one. <laughs> OK, so the app indeed now says something went wrong, error 500. That is what we returned here, so that's good. Um, so we can assert now, uh, xct assert true, that some uh, static text in our UI test will contain error 500. That exists. Um, and after that, we can tap that retry button and return a different response. So let's change this from response to responses. Oh, come on. Oh, there. And this time, we're going to return a 200 response. Um, and as the body, we're going to return some JSON, not a string. Uh, and in here, we're going to return a podcast list that is empty. So we can. Uh, in our UI test, verify that the error handling for empty list of podcasts uh, also works fine. So let's let's do this. Let's uh, call the retry button. Let's tap it, uh, and then we would expect the screen to say uh, no. Was it no podcast found? Yeah, no podcast found. Let's just add a. Oops, let's just add a sleep of 
two seconds here so we can actually see what is happening. Something went wrong. Tap retry, no podcast found. Nice, that works. So let's add one more response. But this time, let's, let's add um, a full list of podcasts because that's what we're interested in. Um, so previously, I was using just a dictionary uh, as JSON, but could, we could also use codable uh, responses here. So we have this model object feed that contains podcasts and a list of yeah, podcasts basically in there, just a struct with some arguments. So let's say body is feed with some podcasts. And then in there, let's create a podcast. Uh, yeah, with some arguments. So let's call this one uh, Coco Heads. And the author is, uh, yeah, Dutch iOS devs. Uh, so on description and ID, I don't know, 124. And the URL is cocoheads.nl. All right, and uh, let's see. So if this works, we would expect to see Cocoa Heads. Right, that was the name of the thing? Yeah. All right, let's run. Something went wrong, no podcast found. Cocoa Heads, nice. All right, um, yeah, but it ha doesn't have an image yet, so let's see if we can get an image as well. Um, so we could do two things. We could just add uh, another stub here to our imposter. So we can say stub uh, with a response and a predicate. Oh. And then this time we're going to say is status code. Come on. 200 and a body. So here we want to return the data for this image. So I think uh, I've already had created an image here, and I created a small uh, enum to load the data from disk. You could type this out as well if you want. For now, let's just say example data dot jpeg dot data. And then for the predicate, we're not going to use the equals one. We're going to use a matching one, which uses a regex. Oh, request, as a method, we're going to say get. And as the path, we're going to say slash discover slash images. Because that's, I think the full path is something like discover images slash the ID that's actually here. OK. Um, so we could add this stub here and use the same imposter for both of the hosts uh, of the app. But let's just create a new imposter for this one. So let's rename this one to list imposter and this one to list port. And then copy over everything that we have. So let's name this one images imposter. So we can separate the two servers that we create. So let's see. So this should be images port. And then we're going to create a second host, images host. We're going to have that port there. Make sense? I think so. So in our host file, we're going to duplicate this. Oh. DUI testing. Come on, images host, and then this is also images. And I think that should be kind of it. So let's run this thing. Fingers crossed. Something went wrong. Oh, I thought something went wrong. And then we have an image from a different stub server. But it's really easy to create these servers. So. It's not that much of a hassle. Um, and the nice thing is that we don't have a, 
uh, dependency on one global test server where other people might also be testing on or where our other tests are running on. So, yeah, we don't rely on other tests to first run or we don't rely on setting up that uh, global server somewhere. So, and we can run our tests in parallel as well because every test has its own, uh, has its own port. So I created two more tests, and I think I've used the same hosts here. Ah, uh, oh no, I called this one static. Yeah, it's not really handy. Let's see, is this one also static? Yeah, so let's quickly rename this one to static to match the other test that I created yesterday. There we go. And I think if I would run them all now, you can see that we have three tests in parallel that can all run together on six different sub servers. So the first one is the one we just created. Then the test on the on the right opens a web view, which is also stubbed. And then the one in the middle just opens the podcast view. So yeah, I think that was the demo. All right. So um, advanced usage. So now I've just shown HTTP, but you could set this up with HTTPS as well, including certificates, keys, whatever your app requires, SSL pinning. Um, oh yeah, I just didn't do it in the demo, but there's also mock verification. So it's not only stubbing, but also mocking, because you can actually afterwards check which requests are made to your stub server. Um, there's also some advanced predicates. I've already showed you the equals and the matches, but there's also a not or an and predicate, and also an inject predicate, which you can use to inject uh, JavaScript to dynamically check if a predicate should match. So this one would match half the time. Um, then there's also a couple of advanced responses. Um, so just we use just a is response to just yeah uh, return a basic response. But there's also fault, which could uh, just send some garbage or create a timeout. There's a copy response, which could create some copy, uh, which could copy some stuff over from your requests to the response, or a lookup to go to some database and fetch some stuff there. Uh, there's a shell, tra shell transform response, which could uh, yeah, execute something on the shell and return that uh, dynamically. And there's also an inject one, which you could use to rewrite URLs, for example, in a payload, or yeah, put something from the request in the response. There's just yeah, a plethora of options that you can do here with the inject. Um, and there's one more uh, very handy feature that we merged a week ago. I think it's uh, it's really cool. Um, it's proxy mode, where you can basically say any request that the app made makes to the imposter, we're just gonna uh, proxy to a real server, and then when the server returns the response, we're gonna record that response. But we're also gonna generate the predicates that you actually need to do this. So how does this work? So when your app makes a request to the imposter then the imposter will create a predicate based on that request. So for example, you create a predicate generator that will create predicates for the method and the path, just like I just did. And then when the app makes a request, there will a, a predicate will be generated for that uh, method and that path. Um, and then the imposter will send the, res the request to the server. The, ser the server will respond with the request, and that will then be recorded. And when the app then makes another request, Oh yeah, and then it will be sent back to the app. And then when the app makes another request, another response is recorded. And when the app makes a completely different response, then another predicate is created. And the cool thing is that once this is done, you can just write all those steps to the disk, and then you can reuse them again. So let me show you that as well. So we had our test. Let's just copy paste this because a lot is the same. Let's call this one test feed. But then instead of using a stub here, we're gonna oh no, we're still gonna use stub. Stub. No. Response. We're gonna use a proxy. Um and this thing is gonna proxy from lists oh lists dot 
podcasts.com. Um, the only thing is that this um, server returns everything gzipped, which is not so handy. So we want to inject um, a header before we're going to send it off to the server. So there's this header, accept encoding identity, which will let the server know, please don't gzip any response that you're going to send. So let's send that off. Let's format this a little bit. There we go. Oh, almost. Um, yeah, so then you have this uh, proxy here. Let's see, do we need anything more here? No, I don't think so. So let's just call this thing list proxy. Oh, come on. Um, it's not something is complaining. I th do I need? Oh, thanks again. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is fine. And then for the image, we're basically going to do the same. But then for the images, we go to static, uh, and we don't need those gzip headers. Um, yeah, so we're going to do everything the same. Yeah, the app is not going to return a 500, of course. We're just going to sleep. Uh, and then just for two seconds. And when it's done, we can use the same ports to get the uh, get the imposters again. So let's say try await mount the bank get imposter on the port list port. There we go. Um, and then we can say write steps to disk. That's one, and we want to do this for the images as well. Images port. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. So let's run this test feed thing. Uh, so now it will get the real server. So we will see different podcasts with different images. And as you can see, I uh, I hacked this uh, last week, and the images are still duplicate somewhere. Doesn't really matter for now. Um, the, the point is that they should be saved now somewhere on disk. So let's see. An imposter folder has been added to the same directory as the test. And in there, we have a list. Uh, we have a list of everything that the server returned. Um, and if we collapse the body a little bit, you can see that it, uh, ah, yeah, it didn't use any predicates. I forgot, I forgot to add those. So let's, I already wondered. If I was not forgetting anything. So let's say predicate generators. We want a list. Um, and then we want a predicate generator dot. Uh, so we can use the inject to, to create one dynamically, but we want the matches in this case. Um, and then the fields, we want to record uh, the method true. And we also want to record the path. And then the operator, you can you can switch it from equals to those matches or and or whatever case sensitives. All we all, we all don't need these options. Uh, so let's see, formatting is a mess, but it will work. So let's again run the test. There we go. And then once it completes, how long did I sleep? Two seconds. It should have updated this list. So it created a predicate, one for the method, and one for the path. Um, and the images as well. So yeah, base64 uh, encoding for images is not ideal, but it was the best we could do to represent it in, uh, in text. I think maybe in the next iteration, we could actually write them to disk as images. But uh, yeah, for now, this works. Um, so the cool thing is that we can now swi switch these. So they are written to disk as an extension of our own test file. So uh, and they use the name that we used here. Ah, oh, yeah. So the name list proxy was not ideal in this case, but let's see. I can now say self dot uh, test feed steps for the list proxy. Uh, oh, yeah, that's an array. Don't need this one here. And we can also say self dot images. Yeah. So we don't need to write to disk anymore. Um, yeah. So let's run this. Yeah, well, basically, it will look the same as uh, as before. Oh, where is it? 
Um, Yeah, and I think it will oh, it will show the same image for for everything. I think somebody, but it's in the UI Swift UI code of the of the thing. I just hacked it in uh, in there. Somebody should take a look at that. Um, but this is a really convenient way to set up your stops uh, for you for your UI tests. So there was one thing I just forgot in the other demo that I wanted wanted to show. That was the assertion of the of the actual request. So because we split this up. We can also use it to. Um, let's see. I just removed the this line. Yeah, that's what I wanted. To get those uh, uh, requests. So let's say requests here as well. Uh, so these are the list requests, and these are images requests. And then we can assert um, that the list was actually fetched. Well, it we did two times retry, so it should have fetched it uh, count three times. Um, and the images we had a, we had only one here, so let's add a couple more podcasts. Go to the list earlier. So it should have uh, four images now. So the images request should be uh, four. Um, yeah, and then we're now just asserting the asserting the count, but you could also assert uh, anything else in the request, so the headers or the query parameters or whatever you want. So let's see if this uh, runs. Ah, yeah, and it returns zero because I forgot to actually say that we want to record requests. So let's run again. Will it work? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so that was it. Okay, so let's go back to Keynote. Um, yeah, so so far I've only been talking about UI tests, but this is, this is also very handy when you're giving a live demo, for example, for a sprint review or for something else, and you really want to make sure that the right data is going to show up in your app when you demo it. Uh, or when you want to reproduce an issue where you know that the backend is returning a specific payload. Or just for development, uh, when you want a stub server for your uh, development workflow. So at Triodos, uh, we now have over 200 UI tests with a total of more than 400 stops. Uh, yeah, and it works great. So to summarize, um, there's a link to the project. I think it's really easy to set up. And you have full control over your test data and over the test data for your tests. It's really flexible. Um, you can assert the network requests that are made to your stub servers. You can record and replay any responses. Um, and I think it will lead to more stable uh, UI tests. Uh, that was it. You can follow me on Twitter for. <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter for any updates uh, on the project. Um, yeah, and if you want to work with me or want to, uh, yeah. Learn more about this, please. Uh, please reach out. That was it. Any questions? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I didn't know about this thing. So, um, <clears throat> uh, right? I have to speak in it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, my question was about uh, one of the last steps you did um, by saving the uh, responses to disk. Is this actually just, you're actually completely skipping mountain bank at that point. You're just returning um, uh, responses that you saved right on disk. Is that true? No, so, the, well, so when you create the proxy, uh, a proxy stub, then Mountain Bank will perform all those requests to the real server. Um, and it will store everything in the Mountain Bank instance. 
and then when you get the imposter again and you write everything to disk, then you're just serializing it from a JSON response back into uh, Swift objects. Okay. Um, so how easy is this to, uh, to set up with a CI CD pipeline? So you want to do the recording in your CI pipeline? Or what do you mean? No, the, the replay, the test. The replay. Well, so I think w uh, when you're developing, then you would use the proxy to record all the responses. And then you have the responses in your project. Um, and then when the responses are in the project, just regular stubs, then you can, then they're just UI tests and you can run them yeah, locally on your machine or on the CI. So the only thing is that you have to make sure that on your CI, you have to start this mountain bank instance, right? So you have to, yeah, it depends on which CI you, uh, you are running, but you have to say MB start um, and, then, uh, and then run your UI test. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so my question is about uh, the speed of UI tests on CI because recently we, I think in my company, we removed all, mostly all of the UI tests because it takes so long on uh, the CI and uh, how do you find it with this setup? Yeah, yeah, they obviously take longer to run than, uh, than regular unit tests, of course. Um, but it really helps if you can run them in parallel because then, yeah, you can just utilize all the cores of your machine and uh, and run them together. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, yeah, when you when you write them, you have to keep in mind that um, yeah, what you're doing. So don't try to duplicate stuff or uh, do stuff that takes a, a long time. And but yeah, they will take a little bit longer than than unit tests. True. Uh, one other thing that you mentioned with other ways is that it's not flexible, and uh, and you mentioned that you keep JSON on the project file. But you also did the same here. Hmm. So yeah, correct. But if you so um, uh, you saw that in in Xcode the stubs were actually in the UI test folder, right? True. So you don't have to put them in your project. Mm -hmm. um, and because you w like when you're when you're s starting each test, then you can basically send those stubs to the stub server. So if you would have them all in your app binary. Um, you somehow have to know which test you are running and then uh, start the steps that, that are necessary for that. So you have some kind of double administration of which steps you want. And it's not like now you can organize everything in your test file and then you have to put stuff in your sources as well. Yeah, true. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Do we have time for one more question? Thank you, Timur. Great project. It really looks very uh, helpful. Uh, I was wondering about one thing. Um, you changed, at least it seems like that, you changed your main source code to, to, allow, uh, to allow, allow this test network. Yeah. Or did you do that in the test, uh, test uh, project? No, no. So, yeah, so that's indeed in the, um, so why did in you the sources. That? Why did you do that in the application? Why don't you just inject the server? So the question is, where are you going to inject it then? So, so what I would do in a in a in a production application is obviously you would say like if debug uh, here, and then uh, like uh, something like this, and then for uh, non-production, like for production, you just want to return nil here to make sure that n that like these tests hosts are never gonna uh, get to your production code. What I mean is, uh, so in your production, you start the service with uh, with the default value, yeah. and then if you're testing, you start that service with a test uh, yeah. service. So you don't need to change your main code at all, except except the injected server. Yeah, but the question is, where are you going to inject it? Because in your test runner, you don't have access to the internals of your app. But you do have access to the app application, right? Your yeah. application, so you can just inject there. No, you can't. You can't? Oh, okay, that's my mistake then. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that was like uh, one discussion, not one question. Uh. <laughs> um, thank you, Timur.